Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Zero Davila. Welcome back to Saver System IT. Today we will learn about a slow sorting algorithm known as bubble sort and we will implement it in Java explaining the code step by step. I've also made some ASCII representations of the inner workings of a few algorithms to make it easier for you to visualize what's actually going on. So we have an unsorted array of seven elements and the algorithm will start with the first two elements. If the element to the left is of a greater value than the one on the right, they will switch uh, positions. If that is not the case, then the algorithm makes no modification and just proceeds with the next two elements in the positions 1 and 2. Because indexing uh, starts off at 0, so the first two elements were 0 and 1. The process will keep going in a similar fashion in a number of steps. Upon the completion of the first step, the largest number in the array will reach the right end of the array, and for the sake of efficiency, the next step will completely ignore the last element. This process will be repeated until the entire array will be sorted in an ascending order and the number of necessary steps will depend on the number of elements. Now let's start off with implementing the algorithm. Uh, we have uh, the class that we call mybubblesort. So a public uh, static public class mybubblesort. And our first method, the uh, public static void bubble sort, to receive as a parameter the integer array to be sorted. A public static void bubble sort int array. We will start off the method by defining two variables. Int n will contain the length of the array, and int k will be of later use uh, in the code. In our for loop, we will also have a variable m that initially will be the length of the array too, but m will contain a number of uh, the number of recursive steps uh, the algorithm will take. So as long as m is greater than or equal to zero, we will decrement m with each iteration. Inside this loop, uh, we will have another for loop, uh, which will act on only one step of the process at a time. For this loop, we will uh, use the variable i. I will start off at zero and increment by one with each loop iteration as long as i is less than the length of the array. Minus one. Uh, the length of the array minus one again. That's uh, for efficiency. We will omit the last element of the last step. Inside the loop, we will have k equals i plus one. So with each loop iteration, the k variable will equal i plus one, meaning that the next index after i, because we must compare the element at the current index with the element at the next index and check if they need to switch. That's the entire idea. Uh, so if the element to the left, meaning array i, is of a greater value than the element to the right, meaning array k, we will call upon a method that we haven't written yet called swap numbers to swap their positions with i, k in the array in question as parameters. And after we close the inner for loop, we call upon another method we haven't written yet called print numbers with the array as an argument. And because we call this method inside the for loop, we will see the result of every step. The loop will continue until her existential condition expires, meaning that uh, there will be no more swapping of array elements. Now let's write the method that swaps the numbers, and we will do this with the use of a temporary variable called temp. And the method will receive three parameters, the elements to be swapped and the array to swap it in. So int temp, temp equals array i, array i equals array j, and array j equals temp. That's it. And we will also have a method that prints out the array in the terminal after every step of the algorithm. It will help us visualize the process by showing us the result of every iteration. Uh, the parameter for print numbers will be an integer array and we will, uh, it will contain a loop inside the loop as long as uh, the i variable whose initial value is zero is smaller than the length of the array received as a parameter. I will be incremented and we will print the value of i plus a comma in a space. With each uh, iteration of the loop, I will be every single element of the array. And after we close the loop, let's print out a new line to make it easier on the eyes and format it uh, a little nicer. Uh, system out print line, new line. Now we go to the main method. So public static void main, string array args. Here we will define the integer array to be sorted and call it input. Oh, 
12.34.0.1 and then we will call the bubble sort method and offer it input as a parameter. Now let's compile it with Java. And it compiles successfully. Let's execute the script. And now after executing the script, we see the first line the the first line is the unsorted array, the last line is the sorted array, and everything in between is the result of every step of the algorithm. And well, that's about it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Any questions you might have are to be left down in the comment section or on our website www.sosit.co. Again, that's www.sosit.co. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.